morning. Uh, welcome to this uh, Living and Working Board blog from projectpartnership.com. Uh, follow us on our website and Facebook pages uh, at Living and Working Abroad. And today's topic is about the slow withdrawal uh, from Brexit, painfully slow, um, and uh, whether that's for politicians or whether it's for business or families living and working abroad. And what I want to do today is just look and identify and pick out from all the noise going on what is relevant for expats living and working abroad in the EU. Uh, the, the noise, the withdrawal treaty that's been produced by the EU and the UK is good for business. It's good for big business, um, big British employers like Santander, Abbey, BMW Mini, um, uh, Alliance Boots, the chemists, um, European countries, uh, European companies uh, based in Europe with big operations in the UK. Peugeot uh, own Vauxhall, uh, Nissan are tied to Renault, the big car plant. Toyota and Honda are heavily invested and they want free access to, to Europe as well. So th these big businesses want a custom and a trade deal and that's what all the agony is about. There's no such thing as no deal as we've been saying for a few months now. There will be a deal but it will be what will be the basis and um, what the current uh, situation produces is, is it a means that the UK will stay in the customs union um, until Brexit and then during a transition period which uh, runs to 2020 and beyond uh, possibly uh, which is where some of the ructions are, are coming from. Um, <clears throat> within the EU there is no uh, customs borders so there's free movement of goods and services around the EU. That means a, a BMW can be shipped from Munich to the UK without any customs tariffs at the borders. Uh, but it also means that uh, an expat family in the UK can move to Spain and live and work and set up a business there. Or um, a, a British expat can go and buy uh, an overseas property in Cyprus uh, or, or Italy. And, and, and this is what uh, the ideals of the European Union are about in the long term whereas the British have set along this path of having a slightly more independent, more independent than they are now. And the, and the question is, is where this Brexit process will, will leave us. Will we be more independent in the sense of Switzerland and Norway from the EU ar arrangement? Or will we be more independent in, in, in the terms of a, an, an Iceland or a Ukraine or a Singapore or USA, uh, you know, with a, a very little content in, in, in connection with the EU. So this is the issue that, 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 that's being debated. And the Customs UT, U, Union and Treaty is what helps business within the EU. Outside the EU, the, the tariffs are very high. So to trade into the EU, it's a very high tariff. And, and, and the bomb that was set right at the beginning was let's have an Irish border and let's protect that. The EU are bigging it up. Before the EU existed, before the EU came along to Ireland and the UK, there was no hard border in, in, um, in, in Ireland. Um, this was before any Northern Ireland agreement. There was no hard border. There was no, like, there's no hard border in, in Cyprus between the British sovereign bases and, and the mainland country. There's no hard border in Spain between Gibraltar and Spain. But uh, Ireland was set as the issue and the problem is is that there's a potential veto from the Irish government if uh, a hard border is created. But there's also a potential veto within the UK because a small party of 10 uh, MPs from Northern Ireland will also veto uh, the Brexit agreement 
if there was a hard, hard border with the EU. So um, the, the weakened minority UK government is caught between a rock and a hard place trying to get a consensus and the bomb that the EU have created is to build up this Irish problem um, where nobody can agree. Now there has to be a third way and that might be that there's no customs union and there's no agreement um, and then they don't have to agree. Article 50 is set in UK law so the UK has to now leave the EU unless there's some radical change like extending the transition period indefinitely which is where one of the issues for the people that want to leave Brexit. So the, all these issues are creating a noise that doesn't impact uh, families and business. So let's look at what the withdrawal treaty does do because if they don't agree customs and trade the withdrawal treaty can still stand and it can still impact and influence a family and business living and working abroad. Small, fam small family businesses, small businesses employ more people because you're more wealth than the big companies. Uh, they just don't have the same uh, noise to be able to create. So the, the, the withdrawal treaty, ignoring customs and, and, and trade now, it does include a right to remain in, in the EU. It also includes a, a social agreement, provisions for that. So there is a, a, a general social agreement throughout the EU. E, uh, social services, healthcare is not covered and controlled by the EU. It's controlled by an agreement within the EU, a corporation. Um, but that will be maintained whenever the UK is in the EU before Brexit date, March 2019, or during any transition period or any extended transition period. So same for tax. Um, tax is independent of uh, Brexit. So the tax rules that exist, the, the changes, for example, to the Cyprus, uh, Cyprus UK um, a double taxation treaty won't be uh, put into effect until uh, will be put into effect and are independent of any Brexit ag agreement. Um, but VAT is an EU tax, and there will be changes on this. The money, the 39 billion that's going to the EU, the, the Brexit agreement, the monies uh, uh, that flows from the UK. To the EU largely comes from VAT, which is a, an EU-wide tax, and the monies flow through through the EU. So th this is an issue. VAT will change, and and this will always already come into force, and it will come in before the end of any transition period, uh, so that the EU can better collect VAT and collect a, a, a bit more from member states. There's already been a, a change regarding the, the UK, that there's minimum and maximum limits that the EU set for member states uh, where they can uh, insist uh, and enforce enrolment. So that the minimum around 15,000 euro turnover for a business uh, to be required by a country to register for VAT is used by countries like Germany and Cyprus, whereas the maximum around 45,000 is used by other countries. The UK um, don't require VAT enrolment until turnover is in excess of nearly uh, 100 million euros, 85,000 pounds. This was going to be reduced down to 45, but in this month's November budget, the UK chose not to do that. So this is a clear sign of, of the start of a divergence from the EU, which is the, 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 the cause of all their worry. The EU don't want to be caught in a transition period with the UK out of uh, the EU and, and starting to be independent, but still taking advantage of their internal free market. Uh, another thing that that will uh, change that's included is that there's a transition period within the uh, within the, the withdrawal treaty. That transition period uh, means that. The UK is in the EU um, up until Brexit date and for as long as that transition period uh, lasts. So uh, that, that could be uh, quite a time 
and and uh, you know it, it, it gives family and business the right of EU citizenship uh, for EU expats in the UK and UK expats in the EU for as long as the transition period remains 